Hello, my royalties. Coming on with this visit video for these signatures. I don't know how this is going to come out, guys. I'm having issues, really, trying to get um, the video lined up right. And my fiancé fixed it for me, and then, I don't know, it just wasn't focused. Stuff just wasn't working. But anyhow... I'm going to try to video record this so on the signature in the last video I did. You guys seen all the problems I had. The <laughs> camera or the phone and the stand fell over. It was just a wonky video, but I'm going to, I'm determined to get this out. I don't really do tutorials and this is part of the reason why, but someone asked me to do this. So I'm going to try to do this real quick. So here, what I did was cut down some of the scrap paper. Why do I keep saying scrap paper? Craft paper um, to the size for the signatures. The signatures are just a bundle of pages, just like in a book, that you put together, you sew it together, or stitch it together, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, to put inside of the journals, okay? So usually what I do is I try to make sure that each signature has, when I'm only putting two in, has at least eight pages because then that will be two-sided, one for each side, which will be 16, and 16 and 16 is 32, so that gives you enough room for a 30-day or 31-day journal, okay? Um, and with... A little room left over and then like when you do them for Valentine's Day you actually get more pages because there aren't 30 days in that month but so what I do is I figure out what pages I want and here again I did scrapbook paper tea dyed paper scrapbook paper tea dyed paper scrapbook paper tea dyed paper scrapbook paper and then I put in a piece of hypno paper scrapbook paper and then another piece of the tea dyed paper now you can have them all exactly the same size you can put extra pieces in here that are like scrap pieces I've done that that are smaller like this one is these are smaller and then you got bigger ones and then you've got different sizes it doesn't matter because it's yours and you can make it kind of how you want. And sometimes the different dimensions just makes it more interesting and more fun. You can always add more into it. Um, when we do the embellishments, you'll see, like, sometimes I'll add a piece of um, either pockets or journaling cards or even a piece of material here. So then it actually gives you another form or another paper, another form of writing. You can add as much into it as you want to have space to write. So that part isn't um, something that has to be where they have to be exactly the same size, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is show you guys what I do from here. Um, I usually take a ruler. Let me get these out of the way here. And I know that most of my spines are two inches wide. So what I'll do is go down and kind of just eyeball where I want the first set of holes to be. I always try to get them at least, you never want to put them just right up on top. So I try to put them lower in the middle, um, lower in the spine, sorry. And then I will space it out evenly on each side. So I did a half inch from that side and a half inch from that side. Then I just went down where I thought the middle might be and then a little bit to the bottom. And then I just, I put little marks for each one. And those are where we're gonna punch the holes. So I'm actually gonna use my fiance's, he does leather work, so he has this great board. It's like rubber here, so it's very forgiving and wood on the bottom, so it's great for punching my holes. And if you don't have one of those, a book will work, an old book that you don't use, but something that is forgiving, an old magazine, that type of thing. So I'm going to get in here and I'm just going to punch the holes. So 
So they go through in the middle. Oh, man, that really sticks in there good, doesn't it? Hopefully I'm still in frame. I know the last video, more of the camera was videotaping more up there than down here. So it's half. So that's why I called it wonky. Sorry, guys. I thought it was totally in frame without standing up looking at it. I don't know. But there you have your holes. So you got all the holes on this side. And then, so I'm going to move that out the way. Oh, so my apologies. What I do here, I did this one, but I won't do that one. So then what I usually do is I kind of look at this and mark here, kind of see where I want to put this, and then I mark the hole so I know that if I lay it this way, it's going to meet in here just perfect, okay? Now everybody says, well, now that you did that, but you got to poke the holes from the inside because you have to poke the holes from the inside. And what I could have did was fold it over and do that, but that, that is just too much work for me. I try to make it as easy as possible. So what I do here, guys, is I take paper clips and make sure that the books are how I want them. And I put one here. And I put one here so it holds the pages together. And I put one here. And I'm sure there's probably an easier way to do this. And I am by no means a professional. Um, some things I learned by watching other videos. Sometimes I just do trial and error. But these are not perfect. They're far from perfect at all. But it's just the way that I do it. So I usually... Put them all the way around like this. Make sure everything's snug, fit there, and I lay it out. And then what I will do on this side is now I can see the holes. And so I'll make sure I stay, or I try to stay on the middle line there. And what I'll do is go ahead and poke the holes straight through. And you can erase the lines if you want, the little dots that you put there. But see, they're all the way through now. Um, and I'll do that to the other one just as well. This is just my way of doing it. Some people will just poke all the holes first here. But I find that, you know, sometimes that doesn't line up very well if you're doing one signature with just a very small cover it can work but if not then you have one signature up one signature down it gets a little wonky guys that's what it does so we're just gonna paper clip everything all around And if you don't have paper clips, some people use binder clips. Some people use these little clamps. Um, I don't know. Whatever can kind of just keep the pages together so that you don't have to, they're not all pulled apart. I know that, I don't know if you guys want to make more journals or whatnot. Um, I think Valentine's Day ones would be really cute. Um, but... And then, like, people have been extending them, doing them, like, November Gratitude, um, Spring, Summer, Winter, and Fall ones. But they're great for making memories. And um, I kind of like it better than just a photo album because you can put pictures in here and really make memories because you write about what the picture is. You know, have you ever just taken pictures and then you later be like, oh, my goodness, what did I take this picture of? What was going on here or whatever? This way you kind of have a record of it. But anyhow, back to where I was saying. So my marks are on here and I'm gonna, you can't hardly see them because they're kind of in the trees. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and hopefully my head isn't in the way or my hair and get these done so now th those those are done so then each one of these now have the holes in them with the book so now we got to get them in the book so i'm gonna move this out the way and i'm gonna take some white thread you can use they have thread what they call baker's thread from the dollar tree um as long as the thread whatever you use is kind of thick because you want to have enough space to hold or make enough strength to hold the pages in there it can't be thin i do have some thin thread that will not work um it'll just break so anyways this is how i measure um i usually go three let's see here one two and roughly there we go three and that's where i'll cut it for each one okay now let me find my scissors And then, since they're pretty much the same size, just to make it easier for myself, I'll just go ahead and cut them the same length. And it's okay if they're not exactly the same, but close enough. Okay, and then I'll put that to the side. And then in here, I have my needles. Um, you can actually order, like, on Amazon or whatever. I have actually used the regular sewing needle with a big hole in it. Um, it just has to be big enough to get the thread through. So this thread that I'm using came from a kit that I got off of Amazon. Um, it was real inexpensive. I don't know right offhand what the cost was, but it was, it was really cheap guys. It wasn't, I don't, as you guys know, I've, that any of you that have followed me, I try to do things as less expensive as possible because a lot of people out there want to craft but they can't afford all the big luxury items and i just want to show that you can do just as good of things sometimes even better than having these high dollar items you can use things that you already have things that you can get from the dollar tree or you know cheap out there so I just thread the needle and then I grab whichever one I want to be first. And so I want this one to be my first one and this one to be my second one. So they lay in here like this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the second one in. And what I do is I use always start from the middle, start from the middle, put it through the middle hole in the signature pages and then in the middle of the book and then pull it through but make sure that you leave a little tail and usually what I do is just grab a piece of it so that it doesn't pull all the way through and then I'll go from the outside to the top you can go to the bottom whichever way is easier for you and then push it through and then here we want to kind of pull it tight not too tight then we're going to go down to the bottom hole. Yes, to the bottom. Hold on, let me get there. To the bottom. So that it makes one long string in the middle. Okay. And then on the outside, you can see we need to finish it off. So we're going to go back through that middle hole and back into the middle. And you, when I put it through the last signature, sometimes you have to look. I always try to make sure that each string is on each side and you'll see why in a minute. You wanna just give it extra strength. So now I have one string on this side and one string on the opposite side of it. And then I'll take the needle off and set that to the side. And then what you wanna do is pull the strings tight, okay? So that it, so that the signature's in there good. You don't, you wanna make sure there's no room there, okay? 
and that these strings are pretty tight. And then you're going to tie it off. I always tie mine in a knot. Some people tie them in a bow. I tie them in a knot because what I like to do is if they're long enough, like these are pretty long, I put little dangly things on the bottom just to make it look cuter. Um, add some little pizzazz to it. So then I'll do the same thing, thread the other string. How's everyone doing out there? I know the world is just a totally different place now. There's so much stuff going on. Um, people with no jobs, people homeless, so much sadness out in the world. Um, just so many things going on. It's just crazy. But anyway, we'll start from the middle again. Let's see if I can get that through. Grab the middle to the next set of holes. Um, pull it through. Grab that little tail on that one. Uh, and then pull. And then we're going to go up to the top. Oh, poke it through. Yep, sometimes I miss the hose. Pull it a little bit. Then we're going to go through to the bottom. Oh, this one doesn't even want to. There we go. Didn't want to go through there. It gives me a little fit. Okay, and pull that through. Now, this string is really long. So what I'm going to do is kind of even it out a little bit when I get into back in the inside. All right, where's my hole? Where's my hole? There we go. Again, we want to make sure that it's one on each side. And I'm going to show you what I mean by this is long. Like, you see how long that thread is? And this one is really super short. So I'm going to play with this just a little bit. It's kind of just like tying the shoes. Just give a little leeway and see if we can pull this one there a little bit longer. And this has happened. I end up sewing through the other string, which becomes a headache because you got to get it apart. There. You don't want them sewn into each other. That you don't want to. Um, I'm going to try to pull this again. There we go. And then pull this one so it's tight. There we go. So that's a little better. Now make sure they're each one on each side because now they're both on the same side from all that mess. And pull tight. And then we're going to go ahead and tie it. And tie it. Now, you can leave those dangling if you want. You can tie them in a bow. Some people tie them in a bow here. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave mine dangling, which I have done on all these. Um, this one, a couple of these may be too short, so I may hide one of the strings and leave just one of the danglies. But it's really, really pretty when you have little beads and stuff hanging off the bottom. It just gives them a little more character to your journal. But again, you don't have to. I did show you guys, and I can show you again now. Take all these paper clips off and show you that all the pages are now, all the signatures are now sewn in the journal. And I'm sorry, guys, these are not the best tutorials, but just want to kind of share with you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Now, I can either, if I don't want to see these, I can cut them shorter and then glue this page together. And so then you'll never see these. And then you can decorate it so you don't see the strings at all. You could do that. You, like I said, you can leave them just as you want if you just want to put a bowl there. Or you can leave them dangling. 
with the strings, it's whatever you want to do. Just make sure that if you cut them, don't cut them too short that they will come apart. So then there you go. You have your signature. Now I poke holes here and you can just use a regular paper punch. You could use your hole punch that I use this thing and just kind of make it bigger. You don't have to do this at all. Another way you can do your ribbon is when you're putting the paper on the inside instead of making a hole here, what you would do is lay the ribbon inside here so when you glue it shut, the ribbon is glued in. And then so you can tie it that way. You can not have any string or anything here. I do it because it keeps it closed because once you start adding pictures and everything in here, these things get fat. They get chunky like this. Like some you can't even close, you know, if you don't have something there. But if you don't mind that, it's it's totally up to you what you want to do. But just out of a, this was an act, which is not sponsored, but it was just a simple act uh, popcorn box and some paper, scrap paper. And I took the copy paper and what you do to tea dye it is you make a batch of tea and put it in a pan and you don't, you add more tea bags than water so that the water, that the tea gets, you know, the dark tea color. And then you just lay some paper in there, whatever you want to change the color. And it absorbs that color. And I've seen people do it with Kool-Aid, dyes, just all different kinds of things. Lay leaves in there so it gets the leaf on the paper. But anyways, that's a whole nother video. You then bake it low in the oven, the sheets of paper, so they dry out. And it keeps the color of the tea bag. So it looks kind of vintage-y. Um, which, to me, instead of stark white pages, looks better in journals. Um, but there you are. That's how you sew the signatures in. Now, I've seen people, when they sew them, you could put buttons here. You can glue buttons on or jewels or do whatever you want. Me, I will eventually, on some of these... I might put some designs on the outside. I may put another hole here and put a charm on there. And I'll show you that once I do more embellishments on there if you guys want to see that. You know, it's totally up to you. If you want to see that, just leave me a comment in the section below. Um, you know, I love hearing from you guys. I am grateful for all of you for being here. I love returning messages on the comments, talking to you guys. It's great. And again, I did tell in the last video about the giveaway that is coming up and I'll be showing you the items that will be going in the giveaway here in the next couple videos. So that's basically it. Thank all you guys for being a part of my channel. I love it. I love it. I love it. But we're going to get off of here for now. And until next time, may God continue to bless you always. Toodles.